is also a, a big step forward to consolidate the number of concepts. This is something that I got feedback on, uh, I think, for the entire three years of the outreach program. Uh, there's another thing we have to learn. There's another thing we have to learn. And this should help reduce that confusion and also house them in the same place and kind of get folks familiar with um, the different options. And honestly, I hope it causes people to use these synced options more. Um, I ran into so many folks who did not know about reusable blocks. And I think this is a really good way to surface a powerful feature in the WordPress experience. So I'm quite excited about it. And I hope it helps reduce the cognitive load of how much that you need to know. That was Anne McCarthy alongside Rich Tabor in the recent 6.3 release product preview a live stream. Of course, all links will be in the newsletter and the blog post at the WPMinute.com. Speaking of, you're listening to the WP Minute Podcast, the companion podcast to our weekly newsletter of important WordPress links, plus news and commentary from our editorial staff. Support independent WordPress news content like this at the WPMinute.com slash support. Donate as little as $5 to power us with a digital coffee or join the annual membership that gets you access to our Slack channel with over 70 members chatting about WordPress news every week. Head to the WPMinute.com slash support and help us out. Today, I'd like to ask the question, is WordPress 6.3 the best release ever? Speaking purely from the user interface perspective, like the cool bells and whistles that might get one excited to use WordPress 6.3, feels like we're really turning the corner for the future of WordPress. Like I hinted in the last episode, a year from now, you're going to log into WordPress and it's going to feel like a whole new app. You want to get familiar with the changes happening and even get involved with feedback and opinions right now. Some of the more exciting things that I've seen in the 6.3 demo are the command palette demonstration, even though we're still struggling with the name, Rich demoed the upcoming features in a way that I think will make giving commands to WordPress a breeze. It's a native way I already use Mac OS with the Spotlight feature, and when I'm using Notion to organize the WP Minute content, it feels very natural, very fluid, although I wonder if it will still remain the command palette if one day we're giving it prompts. There are loads of improvements coming to the full site editing experience, one of which looks like creating and managing navigations are finally getting easier. This was, in my opinion, the biggest issue plaguing even the most basic use cases for a full site editing theme. In fact, it was one of the reasons why I didn't use it um, for the redesign of the WP Minute, which again, I talked about in the previous episode. Uh, it's why I went with Cadence largely, 90% um, because of the theme uh, design. But navigation, setting up navigation menus was mind boggling to me. And I've been using WordPress for a very long time. Some quality of life changes that make experiencing the editor, like collapsing toolbars, focus modes, etc., are slowly making the day-to-day -day a little bit more pleasurable of an experience in WordPress 6.3. Having said that, I do feel like the minimum requirements to using full site editing, or even the basic editor, one could argue, in general, is a 4K resolution. In other words, everything feels so condensed on my MacBook Air 13-inch screen that you need to be native 4k resolution to largely use wordpress and all of these slide out trays from both the left and right side of the editor it is a little mind-boggling however the future of wordpress uh, is bright at least in terms of the usability of the features we've been struggling with now for a while now i can edit this actual post title and the post content these items are split out here on the right, so you can identify what is editable from this view. And this title bar here at the top is letting you know that you're editing a page, and it's the About page. So if I go in here, change this to About WordPress, you'll see it changing wherever it's relevant. And then I can go in here and actually start manipulating the post content. Uh, so I can add any of my blocks, I can add any patterns. All of this is exactly like you would see in the post editor, but now it's accessible here in the site editor. Now, if you wanted to go in and actually edit the template itself, as soon as you click on any of the template areas, so like the header or the footer, you'll see this little notice here at the bottom. And we also have this button right here that indicates that you're gonna, um, that if you wanna edit the page template, you would click this. We'll click edit template. 
And now we have placeholder, placeholder content for the actual page. You can see here, we're now editing the page. So it really kind of brings together, uh, or the start of bringing together the two editor experiences into one uh, cohesive experience, while also putting some guardrails around editing templates that are applied everywhere versus editing content on this one particular post. All it's right, a so huge gonna... feature to have now to be able to publish posts directly in here. And part of what I think Richard talked about earlier of the complete experience where you're able to do everything within the site or without leaving. And this was a big piece of feedback we got from the outreach program from the community. And when I ask myself, is this the best release ever? I think it's very important for the end user, right? This update. If I were measuring it as air quotes, the beginner end user of WordPress only, then I'd give this an eight out of 10. So where does this leave the other user base of WordPressers? developers, and implementers. I can't answer the part about developers since I don't know any code or how to develop a custom block or JavaScript, but I can tell you that I'm sure there are some mixed emotions about all this technical overhead and all the stuff being added uh, to the interface in the back end. I can say that implementers might begin getting passed over on this future of WordPress. And I mean that in the scope of scaling a traditional WordPress services business, having the tooling to build out sites for many customers and having easy to implement no code experiences. I think that's where theme shops and even page builder plugins will have a leg up on the core WordPress experience. Not to replace the experience, uh, but to evolve it and become more compatible with it. In other words, everything feels great for a sort of what I'll say a one-to-one -one experience. I am a person using WordPress designing this site in this moment forever in this domain, but it doesn't really feel like it scales for across hundreds or thousands of clients one might serve, uh, which you would see in like Beaver Builder or Cadence Blocks where the tooling is meant to replicate at scale. Reusable patterns, yes, but this isn't really something that I feel flows efficiently from website to website. Anyway, kudos to everyone putting in the hard work to 6.3. And boy, isn't it nice uh, how far we can go without Matt Mullenweg as the release lead. I'm just kidding, everybody. I'm just kidding. Email or tweet at us at the WP Minute on Twitter if you're still there. That's it for today's episode. If you want to be part of the weekly WordPress news, share links and chat with others. Leading WordPress professionals, uh, other leading WordPress professionals, join our Slack group for $79 a year. It helps support our writers, our staff, and the production of this podcast. Please head to the WPMinute.com slash support to join the WPMinute.com slash subscribe to get the newsletter. That's it for today's episode. We'll see you in the next one.